What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. One week from today, the legal tampering period begins. Free agency is right around the corner. The NFL Scouting Combine just wrapped up. We've got some big takeaways from that coming in the next episode. But today, we are going to talk about some of the rumors about the New York Giants and what they are planning for free agency. One rumor we could scratch right off the list. Apparently, the Giants were interested in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver Mike Evans. But of course, this morning, he re-signed with Tampa Bay on a two-year deal, $26 million per season. I don't know if the Giants were going to be able to pay him that much anyway, but there are some other players of free agency that I think they want to hand the bag over to. There's a really big, high-profile pass rusher that we're going to discuss in today's episode that the Giants are reportedly interested in, and a guard who could potentially be a starting-level uh, replacement uh, for some of our terrible offensive linemen that the Giants have had in recent years. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that, talk about free agency, do a little bit of a free agency primer here. As again, it's one week away. It's getting pretty exciting. And of course, with that tag deadline being tomorrow, we're going to get some news on Xavier McKinney very soon. And of course, we're going to be updating you guys on that here on Fireside Giants. But before we dive into this episode, make sure to like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topics down below in the comment section. Listen to Apple or Spotify. Please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And let's rip off the band-aid. Let's start this off talking about that one free agent that the Giants are linked to that I know you and I are really excited about. What are your thoughts on the Giants being interested in signing Daniil Hunter? Oof, man. Uh, well, I'm doing good, and Jason Kelsey just retired, so let's go Dexter Lawrence next year against the Eagles. And yeah, I mean, right now, look, the Giants have money, and anyone telling you that the Giants do not have money to spend, do not know much about the salary cap space, and do not know much about um, exactly how they can open up money. The Giants have $32 million in available salary space right now. They can open up an additional $25 million. 25 million by restructuring the contracts of, of Dexter Lawrence and Andrew Thomas, let alone the six point something million or six million dollars they just saved from Mark Lewinsky uh, leaving. So they could have upwards of 50. Five million dollars, close to sixty million dollars. Um, I'd say that's a good amount. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these people know more than I do. Totally possible. But we also read the numbers; you can see right through it. Um, so yes, they have about sixty million dollars by opening up all their different means. Even more than that, if they decide to let go of Dar of Darren Waller, if he retires, whatever he decides to do. Look, guys, Daniel Hunter is a bona fide monster. Um, he learned his ways under the tutelage of. Andre Patterson, our defensive line coach, one of the best in the game. Teams were trying to pry him away from us this offseason. The Giants said, no freaking way. Daniel Hunter, next to Kayvon Thibodeau, would completely open up this defense. And listen, Hunter is not just a great pass rusher. He's also a good run defender. He's 29 years old, still in his prime, and he's coming off his best season yet where he had, what, like 18 sacks and like 80 pressures. Dude's a monster in every single facet. Um, you know, healthy, obviously. And listen, I think that... The addition of Hunter does a couple things, but one of the things that it really does is it opens up the development of Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon Thibodeau has been forced to be the number one guy on this team um, when he shouldn't have been, right? The Giants, like, ideally you usher, like, a, a young player into a situation where they don't have to be that top gun immediately because then all the pressure's on their shoulder. It's a lot. And I think that bringing, on, bringing in Hunter not only benefits the defense, but it benefits Kayvon Thibodeau because now... You have to double-team Hunter. You had to double-team Dexter Lawrence. Maybe you draft or get another interior guy that creates a lot of mayhem. And Kayvon Thibodeau's out there like, I get to go against their weaker competition in 1v1 battles while Hunter's winning his battles anyway. So, like, you know, when, when and for what it's worth, if you, you know, estimate this, Hunter's creating pressure. Quarterback now has to roll out to the opposite side. Kayvon Thibodeau's going to be right there to clean up those sacks. His numbers are going to get boosted because of that. He's The quarterback's going to be running the other direction. So um, I love this idea. Yes, it's going to be costly, but it's not going to cost as much as Josh Allen or Brian Burns because both those guys are 26, 27, and Hunter's 29. So it's going to cost you a pretty penny. Don't get me wrong. You can push that money into the future a little bit a year, uh, estimating we take the out in Daniel Jones' contract, but... You know, uh, Anthony, like when you're looking at Hunter here, what do you think the impact is? The impact he could have not only on the defense and the production there. We know that the Giants can be more of a get up field quickly, you know, using those edge rushers to our advantage, but also helping the development of Kayvon Thibodeau and, you know, maximizing his potential because that's going to be a priority for the new defensive coordinator. It's going to be a massive priority for the new defensive coordinator, Shane Bowen. How can we unlock that next level of Kayvon Thibodeau's game? And I think one of the ways that you do that, one of the ways you unlock that next level of Kayvon Thibodeau is adding in another pass rusher to take some of the pressure off his shoulders. And there's another way that you unlock Kayvon Thibodeau's game. There's one of two things. One, like I just said, getting another pass rusher in there. But number two, 
asking him to be a pass rusher first and foremost. That's what we talked about with Wink Martindale, Alex, even before Wink Martindale resigned, quit, screamed out Brian Dable, all that stuff. Remember, we had a conversation on this channel and I said, I'm not super against Wink Martindale leaving this offseason just because I think a scheme, a schematic change to a system that favors its pass rushers more would really benefit the development of some of these players. Remember I was saying like with Kayvon Thibodeau, a lot of the times because of all the blitzes that the Giants are setting up, you're not even seeing him rush the passer. You're seeing him do a lot of QB contain or a lot of stunts that are really just there to clog one lane and open up another lane for a free blitzer from the secondary. I don't want Kayvon Thibodeau doing that stuff anymore, man. I want Kayvon Thibodeau lining up on the offensive tackle and just getting after it every single down, just straight up pass rushing no more blitzing like I, I know that there's a lot of benefits to blitzing in your NFL defense and obviously we saw a lot of those benefits from Wink Martindale's past two seasons with the Giants I mean the Giants had the best turnover differential in the NFL in 2023 did it result in a whole bunch of wins no it didn't but it was still a positive takeaway from the season that Wink Martindale it was his effect that uh, on that defense that caused that but now going into this new defense in this new season we can take a different approach here and say, okay, rather than scheming together pressure and finding ways to create mismatches from blitzers, let's just have our best men on the field at all times getting after the quarterback. Let's go talent for talent. And the Giants, the only way that they can win in this new defense in their front seven is to have more talent than what they had last year. So yes, you're talking about Kayvon Thibodeau being a pass rusher first and foremost, going after the quarterback on every single play. No more dropping back into coverage. Less QB spies, less QB contains. Just get after the quarterback. And then you're talking about you need a capable pass rusher opposite him. And ideally, you get a pass rusher more established and better than Thibodeau opposite of him. Because Daniil Hunter, if the Giants were to sign him, the massive effect that that has, offenses are no longer game planning for Kayvon Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence. They are now game planning for Daniil Hunter, then Dexter Lawrence, then Kayvon Thibodeau. So you're talking about Kayvon Thibodeau being your third best pass rusher, arguably? I mean, let him feast then. If he's the one that offenses are prioritizing third most in this list, He's going to start dominating because we know Kayvon Thibodeau has the athleticism, has the ability. He just needs the opportunity and he needs the development. And now another main takeaway from this hiring, Alex, of Shane Bowen as your defensive coordinator, Andre Patterson is finally going to be coaching Kayvon Thibodeau. He wasn't doing that in the past. They had a separation here with the positional coaches. It was the Wilkins brothers who were coaching Kayvon Thibodeau. But because it was that 3-4 defense, he was considered an outside linebacker. So he didn't meet with the defensive line coach, Andre Patterson, at all. That's not going to be the case anymore with this multiple front defense. The linebackers and the defensive linemen, they're all going to be meeting with Andre Patterson because he is the defensive line coach. And now Kayvon Thibodeau is not only playing 3-4 outside linebacker, he is playing 4-3 defensive line as well. So you're getting Patterson to not only start coaching uh, Dexter Lawrence, which he's done tremendously. Lawrence has taken a huge step forward since being under Patterson's tutelage. Now he's going to coach Thibodeau as well. And he could potentially reunite with Daniil Hunter, the best pass rusher that he's ever had, who's coming off of a career high in sacks and has been one of the five best edge rushers in the NFL for the last five or so years. Now you're talking like that's what the Giants need up front in this defense. That's how Shane Bowen finds his instant success as their new defensive coordinator. That's how Kayvon Thibodeau takes that step forward. You're going to get a lot more double teams on Daniil Hunter, single single one-on-one matchups for Kayvon Thibodeau that he's going to start winning because he's going to get better under this tutelage of Andre Patterson. And not only that, like let's just think of the impact of having a premier pass rusher in a defense. Like Take away the conversation about Kayvon Thibodeau. Make the conversation about Daniil Hunter. This is something that the New York Giants desperately need. They need a guy who puts up double-digit sacks every year, can put up 20 sacks, potentially 16 sacks and it was his career high that he just had this last season but that is Daniil Hunter he's one of the best pass rushers in the modern game and he has versatility to play in multiple schemes 3-4 4-3 he's done it both he succeeded in both so this just makes all the sense in the world if the Giants are going to unload the Brinks truck empty their bank accounts on one player this offseason I really think more than anyone else, it makes sense to do it for Daniel Hunter. Reunite him with Andre Patterson. Get yourself that elite edge rusher. Let Kayvon Thibodeau play as a complement to that player and move forward with what could be a really nasty front seven. And one player that we didn't even mention, Alex, in that whole tangent I just went on about Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau, Daniel Hunter, how about Aziz Ojolari? How much benefit does he gain from this? And in my opinion, it's, it's quite a bit. I mean, you're talking about this guy now who 
clearly couldn't stand up to being a full-time starter. His body wasn't capable the past two seasons, dealt with a lot of injuries, but in a, in a reduced role as a rotational pass rusher who goes in on third downs or goes in and nickel defense packages, which we know that they're going to start playing a lot more of under Shane Bowen, I think this has a huge impact, a positive one, on Aziz Ojolari and his ability to impact the game in a little bit of a reduced role going out there just to do the specific job of rushing the passer. So, Alex, of course, I want to hear all your thoughts on Daniel Hunter, but I do want to hear your thoughts on how that signing could affect a guy like Aziz Ojolari, who I think Giants fans have soured on, not feeling super confident in, but maybe in a reduced role, doing more of what he's best at and not being asked to do much more than that, I think that this could have a pretty positive impact, not only on Thibodeau, but Ojolari as well, and give the Giants hopefully three solid pass rushers in this group. Well, that's what good teams do. You know, good teams don't just have two great pass rushers. They have two great pass rushers, and they have good depth. Um, depth is something the Giants severely lack at many positions. In fact, most of their positions lack significant depth. So, you know, having Ojolari, who's injury-prone, unproven, you know, continues to be a liability in a lot of ways, as a rotational guy, someone who can work alongside Andre Patterson, learn from Daniel Hunter, and not have that pressure to stay healthy and be the guy opposite Thibodeau, I think benefits him. Maybe not in the you know short term, but in the long term, um, if he can go out there, stay healthy. Because listen, like Ojolari's not playing more than 400 snaps a season anyway. So if he plays those 400 snaps in uh, – at points in the game that are going to leverage his skill set, third downs, you know, when Hunter is tired or whatever, Thibodeau's tired, he can go in there and make an impact, attack um, an offensive tackle who's been kind of mirroring the pass rush teams that Hunter and Thibodeau are displaying and encounter with his own, pat, you know, he has that elite chop uh, move. You're going to see some good results there. And he might be able to actually boost his numbers and stay healthy in a reduced role. So, you know, there's possibly that works out really well, but the depth concept you kind of display there makes a ton of sense to me. I think that's the way the Giants should be going. I would be very surprised if the Giants did not walk away um, from free agency with one of these top pass rushers. And to be quite honest with you, the pass rush talent in this draft class, it's not worth first round draft capital to me. There's a couple of good guys in the second round. I think Darius Robinson is going the first at this point due to tested out of his mind great dude awesome player chop robinson we love also tested out of his mind we have we're gonna have a following episode talking about some risers in the draft in the combine that could be good fits for the giants i think chop robinson's probably gonna crack that list probably uh quite easily so if the giants manage to hold on to the second round picks and you know find some pass rush talent there great um if not i think that they should definitely, honestly, in addition, they should probably spend a pass rush, uh, one of those picks on a pass rush in the second round and sign a free agent um, star. So I think that's probably the best combination. Let that second rounder develop for a year, be that rotational guy. Let him compete with Ojolari. You know, let the best man win. Maybe you trade Ojolari uh, for a mid round draft pick at this point. See if you can get something for the future if the other guy wins the job. and Or you just carry four good pass rushers and rotate them. Keep Hunter healthy, keep Thibodeau healthy, and, and just go with a four man rush there and you can Hunter's big enough you could kick him inside every now and then you could get a little bit more versatile with how he plays uh so I think that that's something to consider as well but you know I know this draft class isn't as strong for pass rushers in the first round opens up the idea of free agency where there's a lot of talent this year but I do think right now there's a lot the Giants can do to upgrade this unit and they will but you know what are your thoughts on Jonah Jackson unless you have any other following thoughts on um the pass rush situation for the Giants I, mean, I think we covered on the pass rush situation. I'll say Daniel Hunter should be their top target. Makes a lot of sense because of the connection with Andre Patterson. But if they if they strike out on Daniel Hunter, aren't able to land him, I still do like the idea of Bryce Huff. I think that's a little bit more of a cautionary tale, though, because this is a player who has never played in that full-time starting role, is going to get paid to be in that full-time starting role. Daniel Hunter, the reason that I prefer him, even though he is more expensive, is just because you know what you're getting. You are getting one of the best in the business, and that's something that the Giants haven't had in a minute. And the last thing that I'll mention here in terms of building that stable of pass rushers, think back to those New York Giants teams that won those Super Bowls, guys. Like, you had Justin Tuck, you had Osio Minura, you had Jason Pierre-Paul, and then you had some quality backups behind them, Matthias Kiwanuka and other guys, right? The New York Giants need to try and build a system like that. You can have Daniel Hunter, Kayvon Thibodeau, and Dexter Lawrence in the interior, and hopefully behind those guys you have Aziz Ojolari and maybe some other pass rushers that you add in this draft class. In terms of there being first-round talents, I'll say I think that there are a couple first-round pass rushers, but not number six overall pass rushers for the Giants. So it would be in a trade-down or trade-up scenario. And then again, like you said, day two, I think there's some solid pass rushers. But let's go ahead, 
dive into this offensive guard from the Detroit Lions, Jonah Jackson. I won't lie to you, Alex. I don't know a ton about him. I know that he's a 27-year-old. I know that he's a former third-round pick in 2020, and I know that he's been a very solid player for the Detroit Lions, but that's about all that I know. If you've got more information, I need to hear some of it because I think that this is a player who, yes, is going to be an upgrade over anything that the New York Giants have on the interior of their offensive line at those guard spots, Um, but what are his strengths? What are his weaknesses? Tell me what you know about Jonah Jackson. So Jonah Jackson is, as you mentioned, a 27-year-old, pretty young, um, plenty upside here, former third-round pick, uh, 6'4", 311 pounds. This is a guy that gets into space really well in the run-blocking scheme. So if you're Carmen Bracillo and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, I want to improve this run-blocking unit significantly, which he did very well with the Las Vegas Raiders, Jonah Jackson has the athletic profile to be a great fit for this team in that regard. Now, last year, he played 881 snaps. Um, you know, gave up 27 pressures, two sacks, five penalties. Good player, right? This is this is a slightly above average player that's going to come in at a relatively cheap price. Maybe you could say he's average. Um, a lot of play, a lot of people will probably look at Jonah Jackson and say, "No way, Jose! Do not want this guy. There are better options out there." And I would tend to agree with you. We love Mike on Wenu. Obviously, Illuminor is a right tackle. You know, there's uh, uh, Dotson. There's you know tons of players. Robert Hunt, you listed. There are a lot of options for the Giants at guard if they want to go in those directions. But with that being said, Jackson's not a bad one. His uh, latter half of the year was really solid in pass protection. A couple of games where it wasn't great against Dallas and L.A., um, some good pass rushers on those two teams. But for the most part, was about an average pass protector, you know, decent run blocker. You know, the athletic, uh, athletic profile, I think, does lend um, itself to suggest that he would be a good fit with the Giants. Now, we know how lethal that Detroit uh, running game was last season. So clearly, he has experience coming from a good team that runs the ball a lot um, and, and really needs to protect Uh, Jared Goff from, you know, having to maneuver out of the pocket. Here's what I'll say about this. Because he has a little bit of an above average athletic profile and Jared Goff cannot move, you know, you're talking about he is standing in the pocket. He's delivering from the pocket. If the Giants have a quarterback, you know, whoever this quarterback can move out of the pocket, move a little bit more, it's going to be a little bit better for Jonah Jackson because he's going to be able to use that athletic profile to help um, on those pull schemes and and really, um, you know, buy a little bit more time. So I do think that if the Giants are going for more athleticism in the trenches, I think Jonah Jackson's a great fit. He's not going to be the most expensive on the market. Um, I know over the cap has a valuation of him about $4 million per season. I think he gets a little bit more based on demand. Uh, but I do think this is an okay fit if the Giants are trying to cut costs at other spots. Like if you were going to go with Jonah Jackson, Illuminor, and Daniel Hunter in free agency – I'd be cool with that. Like that'd be a good that'd be a good scenario for me. It's gonna cost the Giants a little bit of cash, obviously, a lot of bit of cash. And we do need a CB2. So, you know, there's an avenue where you say, like, maybe you can get Jackson and Lumino for the same prices on Wenu and upgrade your line equivalent amount. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that two for one deal instead of just going for the big payday for a, a piece that the Patriots already believe is a cornerstone player and they're gonna be paying high money for? Yeah, I think that group of players that you mentioned could be a pretty good haul for the Giants. I kind of like that. Uh, the one thing that I, I want to ask you, though, about Jonah Jackson and how you feel about this, he is a left guard, right? He's played left guard his entire career. He's a starter at left guard. Of course, we know that the Giants need both a left guard and a right guard. But do you think... So we've had conversations about Evan Neal. Where is he going to fit in this offensive line this upcoming season? Is he going to get another crack at right tackle? Are they going to move him into left guard? Do you think that the interest in Jonah Jackson indicates that maybe the Giants are planning on sticking with Evan Neal, hopefully as that right tackle, hoping that he pans out? Do you think that maybe they're going to see if Evan Neal can fit in at right guard? Again, that one doesn't make much sense to me because he's never played right guard in his entire football career. He's played left guard in college, left tackle, right tackle in college and the NFL. Never played right guard, so I do feel a little cautious about putting him in at right guard this upcoming season. I think he makes a lot of sense at left guard, but Jonah Jackson has never played right guard. He's going to be a left guard, so I I don't know. What are your thoughts and feelings on that? Just kind of this idea that Jonah Jackson being a left guard might indicate that Evan Neal is sticking at right tackle, or maybe do you see it differently than I do? Um, I, I know that there have been some rumors suggesting that they're not ready to give up on Evan Neal just yet. Um, but I will say this, if the Giants don't bring in someone to compete with Evan Neal, they're doing malpractice to whoever plays quarterback next year, whether it's Daniel Jones, whether it's Jane Daniels, whether it's Drake May, whoever the hell, uh, they will be doing themselves a a, a, a disservice. They'll be shooting themselves in the foot as we've seen them do many, many a time. Um, in my opinion, you need to bring someone in to compete with 
uh, Evan Neal, and if Evan Neal loses, which is the likely scenario, you kick him into right guard. Um, I'm okay with Jonah Jackson because, you know, with Evan Neal playing on the right side, that's where he's now situated. I think you keep him at right guard. And you have a guy like Illuminor who can survive on an island, is good in Carmen Bracillo's scheme, I think is a good fit. And you have Jonah Jackson at left guard. That's an alternative, right? And then you also have Ben Bredesen. So, you know, a guy that can also compete. Look, I am done handing out starting jobs anymore, right? Evan Neal has had two years to figure it out. Last year, he had two ankle injuries in Fell off the fell off the freaking carousel again. I really need someone to come in and unseat him, or he has to earn that job. Brian Dable has said it over and over again. We're not ready. Oh no, we don't want to give players jobs. They have to earn them. So Evan Neal, yes, high draft pick. They want him to pan out, but he's got to have competition, man. If there's no one competing with him and you're just handing him a job, he has no incentive. You know, he has no incentive to work the extra mile, go the extra mile to win that job. You know, you've got to bring in someone to compete with him. It can't be Tyree freaking Phillips. It's got to be an Illuminor. It's got to be on Wenu. It's got to be a guy that has that legitimate level of upside to win the job. Tired of giving away uh, these these jobs to guys who are not earning it, not deserving of it. And yes, Evan Neal wants to be a tackle. Okay, buddy, we'll go earn it because we need you to be a good player. At this point, the Giants just, you know, offensive line has been so bad for so long. We can't afford to do this again to ourselves. We can't afford to have a bottom-ranked offensive line. And I know Bracillo's gotten a lot of value out of basically journeyman players, Greg Van Roten's of the world. But I think that, you know, Evan Neal, a good player, you can't just be handed handed him the right tackle gig again. It's just it's just not it's not a good idea. I, I think that you have to let him earn it. And if he fails to win the, the right tackle job, let him try to earn the right guard job. You know, um, I, I get it. Like you know, he's a first round pick. He's a former what, seventh eighth overall selection. You want him to pan out, but I'm ready to give him competition because you know if, if we go down this road again and we injure our rookie tack, our rookie quarterback, if we get one because our right tackle situation's a mess. I'm going to directly blame Joe Shane. If Daniel Jones goes down again and gets injured, I'm going to directly blame Joe Shane. It doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. If right tackle's a liability, it increases the probability of your quarterback getting injured, and that is something we cannot sustain for another season. Yeah, I mean, you make some good points there. Listen, the Giants need to improve their pass protection, regardless of who they sign, whether they are sticking with Evan Neal, whatever. The, the pass protection needs to be better. Uh, quarterback play needs to be better as well. understand that, but... You know, with Jonah Jackson, I think that he could be a solid option for the Giants, probably in that second tier of offensive linemen. You mentioned that there's guys like Mike Onwenu who are going to be in that upper tier. Robert Hunt is another one. I mean, he those guys are probably going to push close to $20 million per season. If you want to spend about half that or maybe even less than half that, then you're talking about a guy like a Jonah Jackson who makes sense if you're planning on spending $20 million plus on a Daniil Hunter. So, there's a lot of options out there for the Giants. These are two that Pat Leonard of the Daily News has linked the Giants to uh, immediately. But of course, like I uh, like we mentioned, got the franchise tag deadline tomorrow, one week from today. You've got some, uh, you got the legal tampering period. So we're going to hear a lot of news and a lot of rumors about who the Giants are targeting, who they might be signing in the coming days. But these two players, I like them. I think that they're good targets. I mean, I love the idea of Daniel Hunter. I like Jonah Jackson. I think it's a solid idea. But again, I do have some questions about where he fits in on the line, what adding him means for other guys like Josh Azidu, like Evan Neal. Where do they fit in to this equation? Those are the questions that I do have potentially about Jonah Jackson. And, you know, we'll see how they prioritize Jackson versus a Hunter versus an Onwenu or a Hunt or, you know, a Bryce Huff even. We'll see how the Giants prioritize these guys. But Jonah Jackson, definitely a solid option to consider for the Giants in free agency. A bit more affordable than some of the other guys that we have been mentioning on the channel. But Daniel Hunter, the least affordable guy that we've talked about so far and the one that I'm most excited about. So F it, I want to see Daniel Hunter wear some Giants blue and play under Andre Patterson again. The guy is an absolute beast. He will have a huge domino effect on the rest of the defense. Better pass rush means better second level, means better secondary. Um, you have great pass rusher on one side, means a better pass rusher on the other side. Like just the effect that this guy could have on this defense and all three levels of this defense is actually incredible to think about. And I think that he's going to be interested in playing under Andre Patterson again. So he should be probably that number one target that we keep our eye on for our New York Giants. But again, it's going to be really exciting. Of course, we're going to continue to update you on everything. The Xavier McKinney news, we'll get some news tomorrow. I don't know if we're getting an extension tomorrow. I don't know if we're getting a, a transition tag, a franchise tag. We're getting something tomorrow from Xavier McKinney, Alex, and I'm excited to talk about that. And of course, we'll update you on that. But before we do, all that fun stuff. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you listen to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star 
review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, we will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one, and let's go Giants.